So Uniqlo has got a Merino wool sweater and a Lambs wool sweater. Thing is, I don't have these exact pieces. But I do have this Merino wool sweater from the women's section, which has basically the same fabric as the men's version. And this Lambs wool sweater from the Comptoir des Cotonniers. Collab. The texture is different from the basic non-collab version. But other than that, I'd say it's still a meaningful comparison with the Merino wool sweater. Since both sweaters are made pretty much the same, are both a women's fit. And considering that this is a menswear channel, I'll only focus on the characteristics of the wools in this video. Okay, before we start, some terminologies. Merino wool comes from the merino sheep which produces one of the finest and softest wool. Lamb's wool, on the other hand, comes from a lamb whose wool is shorn when it's around 7 months old. Because of how young the lamb is, the wool is also softer and finer compared to an adult sheep of the same breed. Keep in mind that most brands don't tell you the specific breed of sheep their lamb's wool is from. In general, if the brand doesn't mention it, you can assume that their lamb's wool is from a lamb that's not a merino breed. Similarly, most merino wool is from merino sheep older than a lamb. Of course, you can have merino lamb's wool, meaning it's from the lamb of a merino sheep. It's even softer and finer, but less common and will likely be mentioned if the sweater is made from it. The softness of a sweater is determined by how fine the fibers are, which are measured in microns. One micron equals a millionth of a meter, and the smaller the micron, the finer and softer the sweater. Both wools, whether from the men's or women's section, are 19.5 microns. So theoretically, they should have the same softness. Under a macro lens, the fibers do indeed seem to have the same thickness. However, you can see that the lamb's wool fibers are messier. Because of this, the merino wool has a smoother touch, while the lamb's wool has a fluffier, brushed hand. I'd say they're both soft, just in a different way. The merino wool is more like a soft, thin, well-loved and worn-in t-shirt, while the lamb's wool is a spongier, cozier kind of soft. Another key metric is the gauge, which measures the number of stitches per inch. The lower the gauge, the chunkier the sweater. The gauge on the merino wool sweater is 21 almost twice as much as the lamb's wool at 11. Because of this, I'm more inclined to pair the chunkier lamb's wool with more casual outfits and the thinner merino wool with smarter outfits. I definitely wouldn't wear either sweater with nothing underneath. The lamb's wool feels prickly against the skin and while the merino wool feels okay for the most part, it feels slightly itchy when I'm stretching my arms and I suspect both sweaters will feel itchier in drier winter conditions. Regardless, I don't think the itchiness is a deal breaker since I always wear a layer underneath my sweaters. Both sweaters are stretchy but to a varying degree. From the 10cm mark, the merino wool stretches to 20cm while the lamb's wool only reaches 16cm. So a 100% stretch factor on the former and 60% on the latter. I wouldn't say that the extra stretch in the merino wool is a clear benefit since I don't exercise in it but if you like your sweaters super stretchy then sure, go with the merino wool. Based on my experience, and by experience, I just mean wearing both sweaters on my last winter holiday in temperatures ranging from minus 8 to 10 degrees Celsius, the lamb's wool is for sure the warmer sweater. However, when indoors, it tends to overheat my body unlike the more thermoregulating merino wool. There's no better or worse here, just a trade-off between warmth and thermoregulation that you've got to consider depending on your environment. But in general, I'd say the lamb's wool is more autumn, winter, spring appropriate while the merino wool feels more at home in spring, cool summers and autumn. I rubbed both sweaters 50 times and according to Uniqlo, the merino wool has an anti-peeling treatment and true enough, it didn't peel. Though you can see it's becoming fluffier and it'll definitely worsen and start to peel as the anti-peeling treatment goes away over time. On the lamb's wool, it already has a fluffy texture from the start. So any extra fluffiness created by friction is less obvious. So in terms of durability, I'd say lamb's wool is the winner. Wool is naturally water resistant, so I poured 20 ml of water on both sweaters and true enough, you can see that the water didn't soak in immediately. The lamb's wool started to absorb water within a few minutes and on the merino wool, it was even later. However, when the water was fully absorbed, the lamb's wool felt less wet and it would be more accurate to say it's damp, probably due to it being thicker than the merino wool. On the merino wool, the wetness is apparent and I wouldn't want to wear it in that state. Basically, what all this means is that if you know you'll be exposed to rain for a short while, go with the merino wool for its higher water resistance. But if you'll be getting wet anyway, say due to a downpour, go with the lamb's wool because it'll feel less wet. 
So, marry no woo or lambs woo. At the end of the day, most people just care about the warmth. If that's you, then it's simply deciding whether the warmth of lambs woo is worth the trade-off in thermal regulation. However, if your desires are more nuanced, hopefully this definitely unscientific video gives you a better idea of each woo's characteristics. It helps to remember that there's no bad weather, only bad clothes. So choose your clothes wisely and you'll never have a bad outfit. Until next time, stay subtle.